update 3.10 is here and has brought along four new weapons and refines. Today we'll be taking a look at new toys for Frederick, Honkai, Virion, and Loot. We can get these new weapons for some SP if the unit is at 5 star rarity, but if you want their special refines then that will cost you 200 divine dupe. Pretty pricey so be sure you know what you're getting. We have some interesting selections to discuss so let's get right into it. First up is Frederick and he got himself a new shiny axe. Freddy's axe is a 16 might hammer which isn't a bad thing, more might means he can destroy more armors in one swing. Speaking of damage, if you refine this weapon then it gains death blow 3. If Frederick initiates combat then he gets another plus 6 attack during combat. An extremely simple weapon and refine, I wouldn't say it's going to make Frederick a new must have but it's not the worst thing ever. He does have good base attack so adding more damage is great if he wants to one shot those nasty armor units. With lowish base speed and really terrible resistance, you want to keep Frederick on the offensive anyway, so honestly this weapon kind of reinforces that playstyle. I would have liked to see something a bit more creative since cavalry just have awful build options compared to everyone else. With such a simple weapon and refined, there's not a lot of room for interesting skill combos. Since Frederick is a 3-4 to four star unit, he can easily be merged, especially for those playing since launch. I have seen some plus speed Fredericks with fun builds, and since he does have death blow here, you could add extra speed while getting that free damage. I won't be discussing these type of high speed builds, but feel free to look into it if you're interested. Now before moving on, I do want to just mention some of Frederick's other weapon options because I don't really think a lot of people are going to invest in 200 Divine Dude for a death blow hammer. There are some cheaper alternatives that can still work. Frederick is a very popular Brave X Cavalier because of his good base attack and with his 3 movement he can get around the battlefield to take out key targets. It's a build I've personally used since the early days and honestly I'm probably going to stick with it. If you want the armor effect in this then Frederick can just use refining stones to get a slaying hammer plus and that weapon can actually get the dough armor effect which gets rid of field buffs on armor units. He loses out on a lot of attack compared to the death blow refine but if you want a defensive enemy phase build then you actually don't lose out on too much. If you do want to use Frederick's axe with the death blow refine then you might as well go big and tack on another death blow 3 or 4. This would be a very straightforward high single hit damage build and we can further improve that with low attack and defense. It gets rid of any enemy defense buffs and they lose minus 3 defense as well. Since we aren't expecting more than one hit, you can use Heavy Blade for extra special cooldown. The Sturdy Blow Seal is also fun since that's just another plus 4 attack. Now some additional skills to consider and fill in the gaps for any builds can include some defensive options like Steady Stance 4, you can get Death Blow on the player phase still and have extra defense on the enemy phase. You obviously want to use Quick Repulse for more enemy phase builds if you want KO potential. Other B skills include Chilled Defense for maximum damage on the enemy strongest defensive tank and Axe Breaker or Lance Breaker can get Frederick a double to punch through non-armored units. Attack Smoke can be used if you want Frederick to make his initial attack and then take some hits on the enemy phase. Nothing out of the ordinary here, like I said earlier if you have a crazy merge speed focus Frederick then you have a ton more options like Swiss Sparrow or Darting Blow. Frederick's Axe isn't really anything new but sometimes it's just fun to have that instant delete button for armored units. I would only go for this refine if you really like Frederick or want a 3 movement high single hit damage player phase unit. The second weapon we have is for Hawkeye, he got the Guardian's Axe which just like Frederick's is just a simple good old slaying axe with some extra might, nothing really wrong with reduced special cooldown. Instead of death blow 3, Hawkeye got something a little more interesting, namely low attack and defense. For 200 divine dew, Guardian's Axe inflicts minus 3 attack and defense on the foe during combat and neutralizes the foe's bonuses to attack and defense also during combat. Alrighty, so low attack and defense is a somewhat newish B skill, getting it on a weapon already is pretty neat and it's actually quite fitting for Honkai. He has great base HP and decent attack, defense and resistance, his 22 base speed is rather low and while well, you're probably going to have to accept that he's going to get hit twice pretty often, with the added minus 2 attack and defense combat buffs at least Honkai takes a little bit less damage and getting rid of the ever popular attack buffs that's on everybody is very good for someone expecting to take a lot of hits. On the damage side of things, Hawkeye will get 3 extra damage and neutralize defense buffs which just helps keep his damage up. He doesn't have insane amounts of attack but getting a fancy new 16 mate weapon is nice and depending on his builds you want any extra amount of extra damage to one shot some of those annoying squishy attackers. Overall this is a decent refine for Hawkeye, he hasn't really been a crazy unit and with his very low speed he is usually relegated to a quick repose tank. At least now he'll have a slang effect, take less damage and deal more damage while getting rid of attack and defense field boss. 
For builds, if you have a high investment Hawkeye with a ton of merges and things like summoner support and dragon flowers then he can definitely run distant counter. He has decent amounts of resistance to tank mages and if he's going up against blade toe mages at least he'll cancel out their attack buffs which is the most important one as well as their defense buffs. That's 18 less attack for the blade tome if it's plus 6 buffs which is actually quite good. If you use Hawkeye for 8 the raids he can be your green distant counter plus no C disrupt tank if you want. No C disrupt is there to counter against staff users, brave Lin, and any fire sweep weapons. With the slang effect he can run noontime for instant procs on, it, on the counter and here's where you hope he can score a one shot KO. If not you may want quicker post for general usage but if you don't need it then distant defense or another defensive seal works as well. Compared to Libra, Hawkeye is so much slower and compared to Brave Ike, well Ike's just a beast now and he can also get instant Aether counters if he's supported by Brave Lucina. I wouldn't say Hawkeye is the best for this type of build but it's an option for those that love using him. If you aren't playing on distant counter usage then Hawkeye is a decent typical melee enemy phase tank. He can run all the standard tank builds like Steady Breath plus Quick Repost or you can use Bond skills or the tier 4 stand skills. With his decent red stat Hawkeye shouldn't kill over to dragons which is a plus these days but again expect him to get hit twice so you have to take that into account. You probably want a guard type effect somewhere in his build. Last, let's cover some debuffing skills Hawkeye can use in any of his builds. Lull skills inflict in combat debuffs with stack with the normal red stat debuffs. Because of this, we can use things like chill attack, attack ploy, or attack smoke to make Hawkeye take even less damage. With his high HP, he can run panic ploy, although I'm not exactly sure of the interaction between the low buff neutralization and panic stats. Regardless, it can help his teammates out anyway. As for regular stat ploys, his res is decent enough if you want to hit those squishy attackers who have low res stats, feel free to slot those skills in where you have room. While this refine may not turn Hawkeye into a super tank by any means, it's an interesting ability and I do think it's worth grabbing. You should in theory be able to stack the low attack and defense B skill with this refine to get minus 6 attack and defense at any time, which would be hilarious, but that's probably not worth the effort. Our third new weapon is for Varian, poor Varian, the first unit you summon in the tutorial eventually replaced by Takumi but today he gets something for his troubles. The Dignified Bow is a 14 might bow that at the start of the turn if any foe's HP is less than or equal to Varian's HP minus 1 and that foe is adjacent to another foe then inflict the panic status on that foe. Panic being a status that turns all field buffs into negative buffs and it cripples any units dependent on buffs to function. Dignified Bow essentially has Sudden Panic 3 which is a rare skill and Varian has really good base HP to make it work. Fun fact, he actually has the highest base HP stat out of all ranged units still and that's thanks to also having the lowest base resistance in the entire game tied with a few others. Having Sudden Panic on a weapon is pretty cool and Aversa also has it and she is one of the best support units in the game. That being said, she also inflicts minus 3 stat debuffs, but Varian does have more base HP than Aversa and he can go even higher with a plus HP boon if you want. He also only needs to have 1 more HP than the enemy, while Aversa needs 3 more. Normally most units don't really care about a plus HP boon, but the special refine for the Dignified Bow doesn't mind at all. It states at the start of combat if Varian's max HP is greater than the foe's current HP plus 1 then he will get plus 4 to all stats. This is very interesting because I don't think we've had an effect that uses max HP of a unit. This would be most similar to the boost skills but those compare current HP which is a major downside. Dignified Bow uses Varian's max HP which means even if he takes damage it doesn't matter. I think this is really cool because Varian really needs those extra stats and he can opt for HP increasing skills which not many units also want. Should be noted that the sudden panic effect still compares current HP, it's only the extra plus 4 stat boost that compares with max HP. This is a pretty neat weapon and while Varian isn't a monster in terms of stats, he at least gets a support role to utilize his high HP. I know a lot of people will compare him to Aversa which is very fair but he can run infantry pulse which he cannot do. If you like infantry units and would like that minus 1 special cooldown along with the panic support then Varian is your man. I would also say he can use panic ploy as a seal and while that may seem wasteful or redundant, it allows him to panic foes that are not next to anyone. It's nice to have but of course you can swap it out for something else. 
for the rest of Varian's kit, I think you have a few options. If you want him to go with the full supportive route, then he can run the Rally plus Ruse debuff combo. This keeps him safe in the back to keep Sudden Panic active. If you want to run a movement assist, then there's the Link B skills, and Varian also gets the plus 6 buffs for himself, and that's going to stack with his refined plus 4 boost. If you want to use these somewhat rare skills, then chills are a fine option. Double chills are annoying and always active. Now if you want to get Varian in the action, then you're going to have to improve his attack and speed even more. He should have his plus 4 to all stats often, but if not, then tack on some HP skills like the colorless infantry dual A skills or the HP and stat booster combos. If this is a super merged Varian with things like blessing HP boost or summoning support, then you're going to want to dive into skills like Swiss Sparrow, Wind Boost, Brazens, or the Tier 4 Push skills. To me, getting more speed is the best option since if he can prevent more doubles, then that's going to cut down on his damage taken, and it's going to improve his own damage, and that's always nice. To me, the Strength of Varian and his new bow isn't going to be his straight killing potential, but how annoying he's going to be to deal with. Always applying panic if he stay bunched up, and can offer infantry pulse support and other things like chill debuffs. If he does fight and is fast enough, then you may not be able to take him out in one round because of his high HP, and that's going to be an issue. If he invests in lots of HP, and then you can even keep him alive against magic damage, but that's probably going to be only if it's a single attack. I don't see Virion as a replacement for Aversa, but he's a decent alternative if you need infantry pulse or just want some physical damage instead of magical. Last but not least is Loot, who got a new effect and refined for her weirding tome. It still grants her flat plus 3 speed, which is nice, but also it has a new base effect. Instead of speed ploy, now at the start of your turn, if any foe's res is less than or equal to Loot's res minus 3, and that foe is adjacent to another foe, inflict minus 5 speed and resistance on that foe through its next action. This is something like the sabotage skills, and we'll call it sabotage speed and res for simplicity. Like we we'll discussed with Varian, this weapon requires Loot to win a res check and the enemies must be next to each other. If those conditions are met, loot debuffs them with minus 5 res and speed, which is pretty good. She's going to be able to outspeed them and deal more damage. She also has 36 base attack and ends up with 35 speed with her tome, so offensively loot is very happy with this effect. If she gets the special refine, then if a penalty is active on the foe, then loot gains plus for it all stats during combat. A penalty can be a stat debuff or a negative status effect like panic or gravity. This is a very nice ability and obviously synergizes with its first effect that applies debuffs. In fact, loot doesn't have to be the one applying the penalties, so she's a great candidate for teams that love debuffs and status effects. Getting plus 4 to attack and speed combined with the minus 5 speed and resistance debuff on the enemies is a nasty combo if you can set it up correctly and loot appreciates the extra defense in res 2. The only downside is that the sabotage effect works differently than her original player playstyle and that may not be to everyone's liking. I think they wanted to differentiate her from Sias which is fine. With only 34 base resistance, loot will only debuff foes with 31 or less res, and while that covers a decent amount of units, you'd like a little more coverage. Having a plus res loot is definitely not bad, although a plus attack or plus speed will improve her offensive power, which is also nice as well. A pretty common way to improve loot's res stat beforehand is running Fury, and she can continue to run it just fine. Since she is a faster mage with good attack, she very much likes desperation, and if you aren't running extra ploy skills, then brazen attack and speed just tacks on more power. With this new weirding tome and its refined, loot can output even more damage with this build. Imagine she now inflicts minus 5 resistance on the foe and grants plus 4 attack. That's 9 extra damage, and with desperation, we plan to hit twice in a row. Very powerful synergy and it's tough to pass up on. If you want to be a little more daring, then we have Fortress Defense and Res for increasing loot's res stat by a huge plus 6 and then giving her some extra defense she would love to have. Then you can toss in Sabotage Attack for 3 Sabotage Effects. If she can meet the requirements then that's minus 7 attack and minus 5 speed and res on the enemy. We'd lower the enemy's attack stat while increasing loot's defense and res and then on top of that she's also getting her plus 4 to all her stats. Not saying loot's going to be a super tank, but boy is that a lot more bulky than before and she's not going to kill herself with fury. Obviously a lot of premium fodder, but you can use attack ploy instead, and if you only have sabotage attack, then honestly it could work with fury as well, but you lose out on a stronger player phase. If you want some alternative skills, then you got chill attack, speed or res, attack smoke or speed smoke can also contribute to debuffs, 
For damage perks, she can fit Flashing Blade as a seal if you want to run something like Glaces. Luke can also run Special Spire, although there's plenty of strong Special Spire mages, so it's up to you if you want to use it. I think Luke is better off if you're going to use her for her debuffs, and Sabotage Effect can be pretty strong in modes like Arena or Eight the Raids, where units are generally grouped up together. You can continue to run double ploys alongside this weapon if you want extra coverage. She is also fine using her other allies' debuffs to get plus 4 to all her stats, and her Sabotage debuffs can help units like Gunthra or Yoon activate their own weapon effects. If we get a Sabotage Sacred Seal, then Luke can also run all 4 Sabotage effects, which would be pretty hilarious, and they would be stronger than a versus minus 3 debuffs, although she's going to have panic as well. Overall, Luke's going to continue to abuse debuffs just in a different way, and she still wants some extra resistance to affect the most units as possible. She can also improve her offensive power, which is quite nice as well. That's it for this video on the update 3.10 weapons and refines. What do you think about our new weapons and do any of them interest you? I think Varian's refine could be a sign of updated tier 4 boost skills that could work on max HP. That would certainly be very interesting to see. For the most part, I think this batch is a solid okay. Fredericks is about as simple as you can get. Hawkeyes is actually pretty nice, but probably won't change his usual builds drastically. As for Varian, he definitely has his own niche now, and with much higher base HP than Aversa, along with a plus HP boon, he may be worth looking into. Loot does change her playstyle a bit, but she is still a decently fast mage who wants some extra resistance in her build. That's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.